Hi, my name is Sarah Pike. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my glazing process. I thought that I was just kind of a dunker, which is basically you take your pots and tongs and dunk it in the glaze, but it turns out I have some specifics that I want to share with you. So this is a bisque piece. A bisque piece of clay is basically a piece of clay that has been fired to a thousand degrees. The chemically combined water in that clay is burnt hot. So if I took just a raw pot and dunked it into my bucket of clays, it would disintegrate. It would just break down and turn into a pile of clay at the bottom of my glaze bucket. So that's not going to work. You bisque it first. Now it is fired and permanent, but it's still not fired to temperature. So it's sort of porous. So when I dunk it into the glaze, the glaze will stick to the surface because it sort of gets absorbed onto the surface. The longer I hold it in the glaze, the more glaze I get onto the surface. When I bisque my pots, the first thing I do when I take it out of the kiln, wipe them down, there might be some dust on it. Make sure you don't have any oil on your fingers because the oil will resist the glaze and then the glaze won't stick to your pot. I wipe everything down and then I paint wax on the bottom of my pot, the areas that I don't want the glaze to stick to. Before I glaze this pot, I need to wipe it down. I've got a damp sponge. I wrung most of the water out of it, so it's a little bit drip, drippy, but not too bad. Wipe the whole surface down. inside and out. You're getting dust off of the pot and any bits of oil or debris that might be in there, little bits of this. Now the whole pot is wiped down. You can see it's turned a slightly darker color because it is saturated with water. Now I'm going to wax the bottom of my pot. The reason for the wax is it will stop the glaze from sticking to this part of the pot. This part of the pot is going to be sitting on the kiln shelf and if I glaze on that the glaze would melt and then it would stick the pot to the kiln shelf during the firing and then my pot would come with a kiln shelf which is not ideal so i'm going to wax the bottom now i like to use a banding wheel for waxing the bottoms it's just a nice little wheel that spins perfectly instead of turning the paintbrush as i glaze i'm turning the pot and holding the paintbrush pretty much still so I get it centered on there. Then I take a sponge brush. These are just the cheap sponge brushes you get in your paint store or hardware store. And I take some latex wax that I put into a smaller container here. It's really cruddy because I've been using it for years. And I add a little bit of water to it until I get the right consistency. It's kind of tricky to figure out what that consistency is. You almost have to do it a few times to figure it out. So now by just spinning the pot, I have wax around the whole bottom of this pot. So it is ready to be dunked in the glaze and the glaze won't stick to that part. Okay, this is my glaze bucket. This is a large garbage pail full of glaze. You don't have to have this much glaze. I like to have a big bucket because I make large pieces too and I wanna be able to dunk those large pieces all the way in. So a big bucket works for me. You just need a bucket that's large enough to fit your pot into. So let's have a look at the bucket. Some glaze materials are heavier than others and will settle out more quickly. So you also want to be careful that as you're glazing, you're stirring it because if those materials settle out, then your glaze actually isn't the correct recipe anymore because all the good stuff's at the bottom. Well, I use the water displacement method to see if my glaze is the right moisture content. This is sort of like a do-it-yourself home technique that's super easy to do. I've got a Coke bottle, no endorsement for Coke here, and on it I have some markings. Can you see those markings? You want to make sure it's well stirred for this. Then I take my Coke bottle and I dunk it in and I know that I want that line to be at the B. This is my bone glaze. The other two letters are for different glazes. So I have different moisture content preferences for different glazes. If this bottle sunk too much, 
it would mean that there's too much water in it. If it actually was too high, like up here, not at my line, then I would need to keep adding water and stirring that water in until it got to my line. It's measuring the moisture content in a really easy way before I glaze. So every time I glaze, I know that my glaze is gonna be the same moisture content. Okay, now I'm gonna line my pot. So I'm gonna put glaze on just the inside and the rim of my pot. And then I let it dry overnight and I put glaze on the outside the next day. I'll take just a jug. Make sure my glaze is mixed up first. Take my jug, grab some glaze. Pour it to the rim and count to 10. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I pour out the glaze. You can kind of see the whole inside has got a nice coating of glaze and the rim as well. I've got a few drips around the outside. Once it's dry, which is almost dry, I will take a sponge and just clean some of that up a little bit. So this, this clay right now, this bisque clay is saturated like a sponge full of water. If I dunked it into the glaze right now, it would actually not absorb much glaze to the surface or as much as I want. So I'd get a thin coating on the outside. I need it to be completely dry again so that it can absorb as much glaze on the surface on the outside as it did on the inside. So now I'm gonna wipe it up and let it dry overnight. So like I said before, I'm gonna wipe this excess around the rim and just clean it up a little bit before I let it dry overnight. So I'm gonna take my sponge, it's damp, and I'm just gonna go around the rim cleaning any extra glaze. So I just have it at the rim, not coming down the side at all. I don't want a double layer of glaze. So now you can see I cleaned up all the drips. There's just glaze on the rim and on the inside. I don't know if you can see, there's a slightly different color to the bisque. It's a darker color because it is saturated with water. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then glaze the outside. See you tomorrow. Okay, so now the mug is totally bone dry. I can dip the outside up to the rim and it's gonna have the same absorbency as the inside did. So I get the same amount of glaze on the surface of my mug. Now I'm gonna hold the mug by putting fingers on the inside of the rim on each side and dunking it down into the glaze up to that rim. Then pull it straight up and shake off the excess glaze. Okay, so now the outside of my cup is dry to the touch. The wax, as you can see on the bottom, kept most of the glaze off, but there's still some little droplets. And I didn't wax all the way to the edge right there. So I'm gonna wipe that off with a sponge. If I don't, those will just melt in the kiln and I'll stick to the kiln shelf, or I'm gonna have white glaze where I don't want it. What I like about using the sponge brush is I can get a really nice edge to my glaze there. That glaze line is gonna be visible, a contrast between white and red. So I wanna make sure that I've paid attention to that line. Okay, now it's ready to go in the kiln. I wanna talk about clean up a little bit. Depending on the glaze you're using, there could be chemicals in it that you don't want to be putting down the drain. Also, glaze has clay in it, so if you're putting it through the drain a lot, you're going to clog your drain. Also, glazes are and can be expensive, so let's not waste them. 
So what I do when I clean up is I take my sponge, I make sure it is nice and clean, and I have a clean bucket of water, and I take my stir stick, and I just rinse the glaze off the stir stick back into the bucket. It is going to affect the moisture content of my glaze, so if I intend on glazing with this glaze again today, I don't want to be maybe doing it over the bucket, I'll do it over a separate bucket and then pour it in after because I don't want to be adding that moisture content. Now my, I made a bit of a mess here with my scoop, it fell into the water. So I've got a bigger job here. I'm just going to rinse that back into my bucket. This way I'm not wasting any glaze. If my stuff dries on and it's cruddy, I don't want to put it right back into the bucket because those cruds now could end up on one of my pots and then melt funny and leave an inconsistent surface. So at that point I would rinse into a bucket, let it settle out and then sieve that back into my bucket. If you're going to use multiple glazes, you can do it all into the same bucket and then try that glaze as a mystery glaze later. Or you could say, I've got three glazes, each is going to have its own rinse bucket, but every now and then I'll just sit back into the bucket. And then you're not wasting any glaze and you're not putting in ink that you shouldn't down drain. Thank you for watching my glaze video. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks today to make your glazing day a better one. Uh, please follow me on Instagram at Sarah Pike Pottery and happy glazing.